Florian. Hello. <laughs> so this is the third day that I'll be going out. It's like the third consecutive day. And this time I'll be going out with my dad. We will be looking for a bookshop called the European Bookshop. I already went there last week looking for it, but I wasn't able to find it. Um, so this time I'll uh, have an, a second attempt. Um, and because my dad wants to find a book, a specific book from there. And inshallah, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully it will be fun. And um, yeah, so I'll get going. Hi, so I reached my dad's house and it was um, a nice walk, um, the weather is beautiful and I came across this nice round um, leaf when I was in the boathouse cafe with my mom, I think uh, before yesterday and I was just fascinated by how beautiful, sorry about the sound in the background, um, this colour of the leaf um, is really it's this velvety uh, purpley round leaves with uh, radishy beetroot red on at the edge and it's from genus uh, continent uh, or in other words smoke tree and apparently it turns red in autumn and panicles of pale purple pink flowers um, flowers from it in uh, midsummer and I kind of fell in love with them how I mean, it's just such a beautiful color and it's called the uh, Velvet Cloak and you know, I'm just looking forward to look for its seeds and grow it, uh, maybe um, it really looks beautiful and I would love to have this um, like in my room, really it's a bush though, but I could grow a small kind of what can I say, a little bit, <laughs> I hope Like, but yeah, I kind of search on how to plant it, it has to be in very nice soaked soil and yeah that's it, it's actually very nice Yep. 
So we're going to head off to a cafe and I'll be kind of, I'm going to go around and see more kind of random books, what books I would like, inshallah. And I'll see you, inshallah. Bye. So um, I kind of uh, found my place, the classic uh, aisle of Waterstone, and I'm kind of going all hyped up because, like, I actually found um, Thomas uh, Hardy's books, all of them, and <laughs> I found the book that actually says my name, uh, Jude the Obscure. Obscure. Due to obscure. this will be interesting the secret world of sleep because it was actually speaking about a lot of like interesting things that i actually came across um i was interested why like sometimes i find it hard to sleep but to be honest i'll probably leave this for another time um no no i have a whole list of books um, um so I was thinking this would be an interesting uh, read because um, I was actually uh, interested and this was random. I just picked it up from the display table. And, um, I wish I could hit the tablet like I hit just randomly the display. The library, I hit the tablet. I remember like new books. I look at that. I just randomly like it caught my attention. And I was thinking this this was actually something that I uh, also got attracted to the undiscovered self. I really want to kind of know more about this. Uh, I was looking for this, so I'm definitely gonna take that. And I found the, the uh, Jean Paul Starter books. I never knew they were fiction, and I told you guys already. But they actually, I really want them. So <laughs> I don't know how to say. It. I love the style of his writing and. Whoever the, the author is, um, Jim Postarcher is the author, but there's like a, translated by uh, Gerard Hopkins and with an introduction by David Holt. But the author Jim Poole is actually one of my favorite authors. I um, my dad recommended me to read um, this uh, test of the Derby Villies. Derbeville, Derbeville. Can you just clearly pronounce? Test de Beauville. Test de Beauville. Um, so I'm gonna kind of check that one out. And I found, I'm gonna definitely take this. Um, my dad told me that Rumi, she really can, can, mashallah, a very good uh, Sophie, which can kick to. Uh, he has a uh, school. Uh, it's called the Maulawiya, mm -hmm. and uh, he used to be, uh, I think, uh, seven uh, centuries ago. He is very old, and uh, but uh, you know he has uh, a book Al Matnawi. Al Matnawi. And uh, in this book, he 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 wrote, he, he wrote everything, he, all his philosophy, his uh, his Sufic, uh, and the mysticism. Not theory, but uh, school. That's uh, nice. So, like, I'm looking forward to reading this. It's actually like the blurb really sounds. Um, what do you call it? A specific word. Very. Right? Like, look. What, what makes you feel? Look at uh, theory thing. Yeah, it makes you to know the essence of the existence. Yeah, it's made me. It's really like a. 
my teacher always tells me to not use eye opening but it's very eye opening <laughs> and um, I felt really kind of um, happy when I read the blurb to be honest it's uh, very creative very like it's a beautiful um, like quality very good quality literature so yeah I'm probably gonna get this definitely and we'll see it's a heap but yes uh, I was planning to kind of collect a nice reading list for the summer. Such a nice sunset. <laughs> so, um, hello, I'm back home um, from a very long day of uh, libraries. Uh, this time, uh, I think before yesterday, I okay, feel uh, the 31st or, I mean, the 29th Lipschinel. Uh, uh, Boathouse Cafe. Yeah, yeah, we had like a nice day of parks. We had like a nice day of parks. We had like a nice day of London. And then, like today, we had a different libraries. And subhanAllah, the first library we had was uh, Don't Books. Um, that's more like it but it's a dog book center in marlebone high street london and uh, my dad uh, like kind of didn't find the book he was looking for so we went around um like uh, the like similar places to Leicester square and we went to waterstone near regent street but the first book that i came across which is now for some reason dented and look what happened to it It doesn't really matter anyway but i came across this um i told you guys that i kind of sounded very interesting um and it's called the uh, hundred years war on palestine so i was just thinking you know to bring myself down to earth and kind of realize that you know the stuff that's happening around the world and stuff is happening and it's not just uh, something we could just forget about um so, a history of settler, colonial conquest, and resistance, and it's by Rashid Khalidi. Uh, Riveting and original Noam Chomsky. I don't know what that means. So, it says drawing on his family's experience and archives and those of others, Palestinians, Rashid Khalidi uh, reclaims the fundamental rights of any people. To narrate their history on their own terms. One of the best researched general surveys of 20th and early 21st century Palestinian life, but it's also a deeply personal work for people whose um, uh, history is all but criminalized. I'm sorry, I'm kind of uh, carried away because I have a lot of books on my mind that I want to show um, that I got and I'm just so happy I found something. I'll show it to you later, but for now, let's carry on. So this act of uh, retelling is itself uh, a form of resistance. Uh, Kalim Hawa Nation. And they wrote here, this is the first true people's history of the 100 year struggle of the Palestinian peoples. A beautiful written text and a call for justice and self-determination. Uh, Roxanne, um, History of the United States. And here it says, Khalidi is um, rigorous and lucid in assembling his argument, uh, piling up evidence but fair-minded to the op um, opponents and withering about the shortcomings of his side. I apologize for the sound in the background. I think it's a, like a fire alarm or something. Uh, so comprehensive uh, scholarship with the delicacy and the intensity of a uh, novel. So yeah, like I said, I don't live in a, I live in a flat, it's surrounded by like many people, sometimes get random sounds in the background and you know. But this is like a, one book that I kind of got my hands on. And then I went to Waterstone, I'll leave the best of the lot. Um, and I got a heap of books and a heap, I mean a heap. Um, I kind of spent way too much. Um, but to be honest, um, it's kind of worth it um, because, you know, um, 
knowledge is better than a um, million pounds proper like <laughs> zooming into my face i wish i had like some form of uh selfie stick or something i'm back oh my god that took way too much energy but let's continue and keep the nice uh, sunset in the background so you won't focus on my face too much but and uh, let's just uh, pick random and talk the second book i came across and this is waterstone is the intelligence trap and i don't know i just came across this and i was just thinking maybe i should kind of uh, figure out you know what people like the mistakes people make so i can learn from them and not make the same mistakes yeah so let's jump to the blurb and it says deftly digs into why smart people can do so many dumb things and need us to deep need us deep into the world of our own mental uh, booby trap this is so zoomed into my face i don't know um so we need to find new and better ways to uh, teach critical thinking and measure good judgment reading david uh, robson's book would be a good place to start an elegant survey of current thinking about thinking and how best to do it without pride prejudice or arrogance and that's exactly what i was thinking when i picked this book i want to avoid uh, arrogance and pride because one of uh, this little like random quotes i did on my instagram was arrogance and pride is what um casted the devil out of heaven <clears throat> so this i kind of really liked so i took and hopefully it will be as good as what i read on the team put this back I'm so, I'm so kind of, uh, disappointed on how this managed to just dent. But oh well. Let's see. Ta-da! I got this one by murakami and this was um i was like walking into uh, waterstone the one in Re new regent street and i just saw it on the display tables and i grabbed it because first of all i realized that it was japanese and second of all i need something random to read something that is outside of uh, my um rigidness like that little array of like you know um I just want to go outside of like uh, broaden my horizon go outside of my um tight narrowness you know what i mean so i was just thinking maybe i would just grab a random book um and it's also like you know something i like it's japanese um, style i'm really interested in japanese culture and let's see what's on about this um noranian wood it's called um Norwegian, Norwegian, and it's when he hears her favorite Beatles song. Um, this is like this rang a bell because when I was younger, I used to really like this um, song about grasshoppers. It was like grasshopper hop, da -da 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 -da. grasshopper hop, hop to the top, grasshopper hop, hop to the top to the grasshopper hop. Anyway, so the blurb says, when he hears her favorite Beatles song, Toro Watanabe recalls his first love, Naoko, the girlfriend of his best friend, Hiroki. Immediately, he is transported back almost 20 years to his sub, uh, student days in Tokyo, uh, adrift in a world of uneasy friendship, casual SEX, passion, loss and desire to a time when an impetuous a young woman called Midori marched into his life and he had to choose between the future and the past and this reminded me of this like um story called 
it was a, an anime i'll probably research it and like just put it in, in the description or like edit this video and talk about it but it's like this very nice anime that rings a bell it rings a bell about something so it says here it's evocative entertaining uh, the s word and funny but then murakami is one of the best uh writers around so I'll probably see, uh, like maybe like I can look more into Norakami's books in the future. Yes. So in the past, not the past, few weeks ago, I kind of finished a book called Noja by um, Jane Paul uh, Sartre, Sartre, and I fell in love with the way he writes it's just the style of his writing is um beautiful i kind of uh, the way he writes in a way intermingles with the way i think with my train of thought as well it's like very similar to the way he, like i don't know i'm not saying we think alike but it's just i related with uh, some of the things that he wrote even though he has like such a kind of what my dad says uh, existentialist uh, mindset or something uh, so yeah like um but i really fell in love with uh, his uh, style of writing and i want to read more of his books so i kind of got a load and i still have uh, plenty of other books i'm interested in um uh, finding because uh, i came across ones that are translated only in french so i'm gonna go and look for them in english inshallah soon i don't know when but yes um so this one it says set in the volatile paris summer in 1938 the age of reason follows two days in the life of matthew de la rue a philosophy teacher and his circle in the cafes and bars of uh, montparnasse montparnasse matthew has so far managed to contain sex and personal freedom in uh, a conveniently separated compartments, but now he is in trouble, urgently trying to raise 4,000 francs to pursue a safe abortion for his mistress. Um, Marcel, um, beyond all this, uh, filtering an uneasy light on his uh, predicament rise, uh, rises the distant threat of the coming of the Second World War. The Age of Reason is the first volume in Sartre's uh, Roads of Freedom uh, tri Trilogy. Um, so yeah, that's one of his books I got. The second um, one of his books is called The Wall and first published in 1939, a few years before his most influential work in theatre and philosophy, The Wall was Sartre's first and only collection of short fiction. The little piece tells the story of a prisoner during uh, the Spanish Civil War on the eve of his execution by a firing squad um, he was told he will be separ uh, spared sorry, in, uh, if he can uh, betray the whereabouts of a fellow Republican. And this leads him to question his cause and his loyalty as the uh, mental torments that he and two other uh, inmates endure unfolds in unflinching uh, detail. It's been a long day. So this collection, which also includes the room, Erostratus and Intimacy, short physiological tales in which individuals grapple with questions of madness, sexuality and death, is, uh, well as, as well as the childhood of a leader, the extended uh, chronicle of a young man's emotional deterioration and embrace of uh, fascism, provides a fascinating and uh, accessible introduction to the author who would become the figurehead of existentialism yes 
I don't believe everything he says word for word and it is fiction after all. I didn't even know it was fiction. So. Mm, and this is another Jean Paul, uh, Jean Paul Starcher book called Iron in the Soul. And let's see what's this one. So a profound, subtle and terrifying piece of writing. So June 1940 was the summer of uh, defeat for France soldiers deserted by their officers, um, utterly uh, demoralized, awaiting the armistice day by day. Deserted by their officers, utterly demoralized, awaiting the armistice Day by day, hour by hour, iron in the soul unfolds with men thought. Uh, uh, <laughs> iron in the soul unfolds what men thought, fell and did as France fell. Men who struggled, men who ran, men who fought, and tragic men like her, Matthew had dedicated his life to finding personal freedom. Now overwhelmed by remorse and bitterness, he must uh, learn to kill. So, Iron in the Soul, the third volume of Sartre's Roads uh, to Freedom trilogy, trilogy, is a harrowing depiction of war and what it means to lose. So, The Age of Reason, did I get that? Yes, I'm so happy that I got that because like it's um, recommended at the back. So I got these two. And they look good. I don't know. I just love the way um the the guy writes. To be honest, and it was uh, translated by Gerard Hopkins. So it's actually Gerard Hopkins' job. Um, let's see if this is in English. Thank God. So yes, Andrew Brown. So they're translated by like different um people. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the same author. So. And another random book that I picked, and this is actually like a book that I'm actually I am happy that I got for some reason, is Rumi, which is a day book. So it's 365 poems and uh, teachings from the beloved Sufi master. And yeah, <laughs> my dad said that uh, this is a beautiful um, kind of piece of um, literature, and I'm willing. I'm not willing. I'm looking forward to. Uh, plunge into its uh, world of uh, wisdom and my dad uh, recommended me to read the, this uh, test of the Derbyville I don't know how he pronounced it Derbyville um, and it's written by Thomas Hardy um, I kind of came across uh, books by Thomas Hardy on one uh, it was called uh, Jude the Outcast, I think. Out. I forgot it, but it has Jude in it, and I was going to get it. But my dad told me that it's a tragic uh, story, and I might as well not read it because I don't want to associate such a miserable um, uh, thing with my name. But it's just a story, so it really doesn't have... I don't take it personally or anything. But um, since I knew that it was like a kind of a negative uh, story, I didn't get it. But I have it in mind. Um, I may rec kind of um, go and get it maybe another time. Anyway, so yes, I was recommended to read this by my dad. Got this as a bookmark, the underground tube map. I couldn't find a nice bookmark. I'm still looking for one. So, finally found Albert Camus, The Myth of Sisyphus. And this was recommended by um, the book I read. Actually, let's go and get it. I'm back. So, I was reading this uh, Noja by uh, Jane Paul uh, Sater, sorry, Sartre and um 
they recommended um, in the introduction, I think. He has many like books that he wrote. The, but I kind of have the very famous ones like The Wall, The Age of Reason, Iron in the Soul, but he has the Reprieve B, which I don't have yet, and Le Temps Modern. I don't know if it's um, translated in English, but I'm still gonna like search for it. And there are many, like, um, I think at the end. The myth of Sisyphus, um, they said here, it thus belongs alongside Camus' novel The Stranger and his philosophical essay The Myth of Sisyphus. I kind of came across The Stranger and I think it was called The Outsider. Sorry, my alarm just went off and it cuts off the video. So there I have to do a lot of um, editing, but it doesn't matter. I actually, I'm enjoying YouTube. It's kind of more, it's kind of enjoyable, it's more enjoyable than expected. But anyway, The Myth of Sisyphus by Camus was, um, it says here, okay. In a lecture delivered in 1945, John Paul Sartre described existentialism as the attempt to draw all the consequences from a position of consistent atheism. Nausea, which appeared seven years earlier in 1938, represents an early installment in this process of um, I don't know how to pronounce this thing installment in this process of atheistical traction. It thus belongs alongside Camus' novel The Stranger and his philosophical essay The Myth of Sisyphus books which likewise commit themselves to the prosecution of difficult consequences and which, like nausea, are only partially convincing in the responses or resolutions they propose to the realization that, after God, life is without meaning. So, I don't know, it's like a, just something interesting. It broadens your kind of way of thinking, gives you more of like a wider mind but I don't take things word for word. So yeah, the myth of Sisyphus was something I'm interested in. I started reading the um, Outsider or it's called The Stranger. I don't know, I think it's the same thing, but different um, titles. So yeah, that's a book I got from the left. And let's see. The last and final book from Waterstone random as well is The Undiscovered Self and it was quite pricey um, by Jung and uh, it was £16.99 so I mean it's price kind of uh, uh, kind of speaks many words and I think it's something that would will kind of teach me something and the blurb says Written three years before his death, the undiscovered self combines acuity with concision in masterly fashion and is jung at his very best, offering clear and crisp insights into some of his major theories such as the duality of human nature, the unconscious, human instinct and spirituality. Jung warns against the threats of totalitarianism, totalitarianism and political and social propaganda to the free-thinking individual. So at timely, as timely now as when it was first written, Jung's vision is a solitary reminder of why we should not become passive members of the world, the, the herd. And that uh, kind of um, made me kind of really want to read it more because um, it was actually very, like it kind of um, rang a bell because sometimes I feel like sometimes society wants to 
make everything uh, homogene homogenize everything or what can i say um make everything identical and like it makes you forget that diversity is what makes life um beautiful i mean the different languages the different races the different uh, shapes and, you know forms and all that i don't know what to say it's just um diversity is something that i really love and i learn from different opinions different ideas like there's like it's just beautiful so it makes the world the richer and um more um what can i say interesting <laughs> so yep that's foster stone and last and not the least is i went to foilies and this is like the first time i went to this library it's a it was a very nice um five six floor library um and i got myself a book on the mystery of the exploding teeth and other uh, curiosities from the history of medicine curiosities i beg your pardon and it's written by thomas morris and i came across the japanese uh, translation um first because i was uh, going around the japanese um section of the uh, bookstore which i think was on the fourth floor i think and they referred me to go to the third floor and i found myself an english translation and i went to the first floor and guess what i came across Ta-da! it's sherlock holmes comic books anime um like uh, edition omg do you know i used to love sherlock holmes since i don't know i was a fetus and to be honest finding these really kind of made me feel so like over the moon like i just <laughs> i picked them up and i wanted to like buy all of them all at once but i was just thinking to myself you know i'll finish these and then i would buy one at a time because you know they are quite pricey they're like um let's see the price 12 pound 99 so it's like 13 pounds each and um, so i got the great game and um a study in pink so these two are quite like i'm so happy with them like i don't know i like i read the short stories um but like having them in like comic like the graphic style is something else so i'm just really happy and they'll make a great uh, decoration in my room because i mean i just i don't know like i'm a big fan and yeah i'm kind of looking forward to read them and uh, kind of get the other ones um the other one is called um blind banker i think and i'll search it and uh see if i remember it on, on the, at the top of my head something like uh adventure but like there are like many more i found the limited edition one uh but it had the scene where um the woman undressed in front of sherlock holmes and like whoever watched uh the um what do you call it series i just dropped my phone so whoever watched the series or the episode will actually like where should i look well will understand what i'm on about um or read the book but i didn't get it because um it it's it's just not a nice uh, scene um of the series but i'm just really happy 
I got my hands on this. I was planning to buy them online. But subhanallah, like, it's like Allah guided me to that library. I didn't know it even existed. Um, so it's called Foil. And there are other book, uh, library bookshops that I want to like visit. Like, um, there is like, there are many bookshops, um, during, like uh, around the sister square. Um, so yeah, like I'm getting, I'm looking forward to kind of read these now. I don't want them to be like a bookshelf decor and I want it to be something that I, uh, what can I say? feed my brain with <laughs> to be honest when I see a book it looks like bakery um I don't know the bibliosmia which is like the, it's an ugly word but it's the smell of books is like the smell of fresh bakery to my nostrils I don't know anyway I'll see you and inshallah um I may you know take you um along with me to um other bookshops we can discover new ones together and I look forward to reading all of these. I uh, kind of, um, I'm swimming in books right now and you know, I'll swim my way through them one by one, inshallah. And nobody knows, I may ha make a new channel um, talking about what I think. Uh, it's like, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, to new ideas, new hobbies, and I'll see you soon. I'll stop talking right now and stay positive, always stay positive and believe in yourself. Say hello. And she has she has a hello. Uh, so I'm gonna go let's call it a day I'm gonna go to sleep inshallah and I was actually wondering like of uh, making a video specifically for how I help myself sleep because sometimes uh, I my body is tired and fatigued as hell but my eyes stay open so I would like to kind of uh, figure out ways to stop overthinking to stop um kind of uh, you know having this weird insomnia problem and you know like i could make a video on how i help myself sleep and i have a little nice like a lot of nice um tips um that could help not only me because i look back at these videos and reflect but maybe others i'm not uh specialist in any way sh shape or form I'm still a student but inshallah maybe my ideas may help so my salama and i'll see you soon matcha matane and sayonara